Hi folks, I've made a few videos now about my homebrew computer, the EB6502. I set a big, crazy, audacious goal of getting LoadRunner working. At the time, I had no idea how I'd accomplish it, but I have. The computer still doesn't feel done yet. There's more I'd like to do. To frame my project and to give it some direction, I'm now setting my sights on Ultima 4. My goal, get the Apple II version of Ultima 4 working perfectly on my homebrew computer. Along the way, learning more about electrical engineering, OS development, and computer history. I want to give it color and sound. Ultima 4 for the Apple II supported two mocking boards and had excellent sound. This time I'm going to try something a little different. I want to try and document my process and progress as I go. For me it's an experiment in communication. I don't know how long it will take or if I will succeed, but that's what I'm doing. Now I would like to start with a, a walkthrough of the EB6502 schematics. Show you some of the similarities and differences between the EB6502 and the Apple II. This is the CPU, the ROM, 128 kilobyte static RAM. This is a 22v10 PLD that handles the glue logic and uh, the chip signals. One of them is a device signal and this is the a per device signal. So AC via ROM disk signals. These are uh, bus transceivers and the way the video system works is the CPU and the video share the RAM and they share at different times in the clock. So when the clock is high, the CPU has access to the RAM and when the clock is low, the video hardware has access to the RAM. And that way the CPU can use the RAM however it wants to and the video hardware can read from the RAM. So these bus transceivers, here you have the uh, these address lines and these are labeled uh, CA0 through CA15 and the the ROM is connected here and uh, these bus transceivers are connected and on the other side of the bus transceiver you have the VA0 through VA15 and CD0 through CD7 and on the on the RAM the address lines hook up through this VA signal and so what that allows is when this CPU bus signal is high for the CPU bus to disconnect from the from the video lines. As for video hardware, oops. okay. So here you've got the the VA zero through VA fifteen here, and uh, these are controlled by a vid bus signal. And so when these when this goes low. Uh, that allows the this video hardware to put an address out on the on the bus and likewise there's a, a latch here that will capture whatever data is being output by the RAM and, and store it here the whole system is run off of a 25 megahertz clock it's divided down into multiple uh, clock signals. So uh, 25, this is roughly 12, 6, 3, and 1.57 megahertz. Uh, the system, it, uh, the CPU and the video reads are, are run off of this Phi 2 clock. Uh, pixel clock is Phi 16. Okay, so the timing of the video signal comes from these uh, LS590 timers. So these are 8-bit uh, timers, and uh, there's one uh, there's one here for the for horizontal values. You've got uh, HQ0 through HQ, HQ5, and um, and then uh, there's a there's a vertical there are vertical counters, and there's two of them chained to, together since there are ten. Uh, 10 bits here and it looks like uh, uh, this is run off of Phi 2 so um, for yeah it makes sense for horizontal uh, run off of Phi 2 and there's only there are only six um, bits here because uh, I essentially take the VGA timing and divide by 16 and it will still work so uh, now on the vertical counters these are this clock is is triggered by the horizontal reset 
signal. So every time we finish a line effectively, this, this clock goes and uh, we'll increment the, the vertical count. Now, uh, this ROM uh, contains all of the information needed for signaling. So it, it's addressed in using all of the horizontal and all of the vertical uh, bits, and then uh, still grounding out these remaining three address bits. There's more room on that ROM. But uh, essentially just stored on this ROM are uh, flags that indicate you know, whether uh, you know, an H reset signal, V reset, H sync, V sync, or if one of these display signals should be fired. It looks like actually only these, these top five are coming from the ROM, and this is just sort of repurposed as a latch. Uh, these other signals, probably for delay. Um, okay, so this latch is a little bit faster at twice the speed of the clock. And uh, But this is how sort of the basic VGA signals are generated. H-sync, V-sync, and display, along with the vertical and horizontal reset information. Okay, so uh, this is... Um, this is the part of the circuit that generates the signals necessary for coordination of a few things. So essentially it's just a 74 LS154, uh, four, four input to 16 output decoder. And it just, it takes these four signals and based on that will drop one of these uh, output lines to low. And by hooking up the, the different clock signals here, effectively what this does is takes that 1.5 five, seven megahertz clock cycle, you know, divides it up into 16 different uh, spots. And so by using this and hooking it up to this latch, uh, it specifies sort of the start and end point of various signals. Video memory latch, so this is the, this is the signal that causes the, uh, the latch to uh, grab the data that's out on the data bus and store it. And then there's a, a signal for when to enable the video uh, and also when the video bus should be uh, should be enabled. So uh, both of these are are used in the in the circuit here. Now there's a text mode and graphics mode here. This just happens to be using this not. Okay. So these so there's a load shift here as well. So this is for the when to load the shift register. All these signals are just coming out of slicing up the the clock signal through this decoder. Okay, so back to here. So the way that this works, so you've got your, you've got the counters here that we talked about before on the to generate the signals. So these are the horizontal and vertical uh, counters, and and then um, now I've got two ROMs here, and these ROMs contain the uh, memory addresses to read from the system RAM for each line, the starting point. In, as inputs into the address, you hit the first uh, nine are the, uh, the counter outputs for vertical. And there are nine because it's a 480 uh, lines signal, 640 by 480. So 480 lines, which means uh, lines need to be duplicated. And that's not trivial to do. So, so basically when it's scanning through memory, it's going to have to, you know, go read, you know, start at one line and, and read through, and then it's going to have to go do it again. Uh, and so this ROM allows me to define per line for all 480 lines, which address in memory to start at. And so that's what this contains is that starting address. Now it also has some other uh, things connected to the address pins, uh, including a graphics mode. So that can either be graphics mode or text mode. And then there's also a graphics page. So that can be page one or page two. That enables switching where in the RAM that the video hardware should look. And so for the text mode, for instance, it goes and looks at uh, 0400 for text page one. And for graphics mode, it's at 2000 or 4000, depending on the page. And those are all just defined in, the, in these ROMs. And so what, the way that it works is, uh, as these counters are changing, uh, the output on on these data lines, these AR, um, oh, what is this? Uh, these data lines are not even hooked up. But three, four, five, and three, four, five, six, and seven for the low, uh, the low byte of the of the video memory address, and then here um, eight through you know fifteen for the high, and these bottom ones are not needed because we never look at at those so that they're just not hooked up but um yeah so this enables you know given whatever line we're at uh for that address to be output here and and those get those get latched into these counters and so these four bit counters take the output of these roms 
and essentially uh, it creates the starting place for, for counting. And here you can see the, the vid enable uh, signal here. So that's where the vid, enable, the vid enable signal is used as a clock pulse essentially to, to increase the, the address that uh, is expressed out onto the, this, you know, this VA bus, you know, the, video, the video bus. And so that connects to the, to the system RAM. And then you've got a, you know, the vid bus signal here is what actually enables the these bus transceivers to start you know, pushing that out onto the onto the bus. And that's different from the the CPU bus line because there's a sort of a timing thing there. We don't want this thing to be driving the the video bus at the same time that the CPU bus is. And so there's a little bit of buffer between when these signals uh, change. So that's how these addresses show up on this thing. And then. Uh, this this there's the VM latch so this is the that's the signal that that causes this um, what's being output on the video bus to latch and so this would either be an you know an ASCII character for text mode or it would be just the bitmap pattern for the graphics mode and this is the graphic mode shift register here so so this one has um, you know if it's not graphics mode then it inhibits this thing and it won't actually push and there's the the pixel clock at 516 here uh, VL zero through seven, you know, these are the, this is the data coming off of the, off of this latched uh, memory. And then you've got the load shift signal, which uh, is coming from the timing. And then you've got a shift out. Um, this is, this is what actually goes out to the uh, video. So this is, that's the output of the shift register. So this thing will be, will be running at uh, around 12 megahertz and just shifting out the out you know the value of those reads. So while this thing's running at 1.5 megahertz and reading every eight pixels, this thing's shifting out, uh, uh, you know, eight times in that period. Okay. Now there's uh, a text mode, and so for text mode, that latch data uh, comes into this ROM, and this ROM um, contains font information. And so basically, the the you know these first uh, seven or eight uh, address lines refer to the ASCII value. And then from there, there's uh, a line number. So these are the these are the line values from the counter. Uh, and so basically, whichever scan line we're on, and it can be between, like there's 16. So they're eight, it, the font is actually eight by 16. So so the, in, the, in the graphics mode, it's, you know, 320 by 200, but in the text mode, it's actually 320 by 480. And so it's a 16 line font. And so uh, this just refers to which line of the font. So ASCII character, the line of the font, and then there's a bunch of different fonts that are installed. So I've got, um, well, it looks like uh, six six bits there for font. And so those can be changed at uh, at runtime via the the soft switches. And then there's, uh, you know, if it's text mode, this thing's enabled and output's enabled and out comes pixel information here. And so that gets pulled into this shift register, which will then, you know, output uh, whatever line of whichever character uh, of whichever font, uh, and that's how the that's how the output of the of the text data works. Here you can see the VGA plug, and there's the H sync, the V sync, uh, RGB, RGB, RGB. So all, you know all monochrome. These, this is the output of the shift registers. If either one of these are set, then shift out is set. Um, just happening to use an XOR because I had it available. Could be an OR. And then um, here is the an AND that uh, if there's something being shifted out and we're in this display region three, then it outputs this RGB, which goes out through the these pins and creates the monochrome signal. Okay, I've got this ROM disk component, and this is a, a 512 KB ROM. And the way this works is there is uh, a decoder here, which is enabled when the ROM disk uh, is selected. And uh, based on the address 0 and 1, uh, while it's selected, and this uh, whether it's a reader or write, one of these different uh, signals will fire, and um, like for instance, this is a, this would be a read of of the uh, of this ROM disk, uh, and you've got this uh, LSB, MSB, and Bank uh, register, and so that's what these three registers are doing. And if you um, 
if you're writing, for instance, these would uh, essentially latch whatever uh, is on whatever's on the data bus. So you essentially what you could do is you can write, um, you know, write a, an LSB, write an MSB, write a bank, and then read from uh, this ROM disk address. And when you when you do that, you'll get that byte out of this thing and so that creates a little serial protocol where where you can just run through you know from a start to an end byte essentially and just go read these things and that's how the load runner loads now is it uh it, it's on this rom and it just reads this into into memory and then executes from there um all the level data is here as well and so that's that's just how that works i'd like to remove this in the future and just rely on the sd card so i'll probably I'll probably do that and then also in addition to these you know to this rom disk and setting these things is the uh this, this latch here and so uh, this also will latch on the on the uh the data and you can set uh whether it's text mode or graphics mode you can set which page uh of graphics or text and then you can select a font and so they're you know essentially just by writing to this register you know you can change text mode graphics mode change font and that's just how it works now right now these are um this is done by writing but the apple II uh works better it's it's done by um you can actually flip these bits by just reading and so you can switch into a graphics mode by doing a, a bit operation and you don't change any memory it just it just does a read and so in one instruction you can you can you know switch modes whereas i have to load a value and then write to this address which then you know flips all of these switches and that's how that's how that works and so it's just a few more instructions to switch into graphics mode or text mode and uh not ideal i think it could be more optimal so i want to i want to fix that and then um for the vias uh okay so on the vias i've got uh uh, you know data uh, for keyboard and clock for keyboard that come into this via and basically whenever the clock fires there's an interrupt and I just read the you know the value of this pin and in software uh, put together you know the, all the bits and uh, do all the translation conversion in software and that's how the keyboard works and it works fine so that's how that's what I'm doing uh, the PS2 keyboard and then uh, here's the onboard SD card, but I accidentally uh, included the clock twice here, and um, it should have the, the chip select. So I've got a, a few of these dedicated for the SD card, and I need to revise the the PCB to make this work. And I'm not sure I quite have this circuit set up right anyway. I've got a little voltage um, regulator that, that switches down to 3.3 volts, so I've got the power at 3.3 volts and uh, and I've got the ground. And then uh, the I think that this this one is probably gonna still be five volts and so is the clock and so is the, so is the SD. So even if this work connected correctly, I'm not sure it would work right yet. I think I may need to do some more level shifting here. Uh, I do have the SD card working externally through this port, uh, and, but I'm using one of those Adafruit uh, SD card uh, devices that has the built-in level shifting and just natively supports five volts so maybe that's why that works but yeah so this is 128k bytes and i'm only using 48k of it right now so uh, one of the things i would like to do is add uh, banking for the ram and also for the rom the the rom is getting pretty tight i've got a memory map uh, where uh, i've got you know 48k of ram uh, then I've got devices in this region here. Uh, same region that the Apple II uses, but not exactly uh, the same values. So I might try to uh, make that a little closer. Uh, basic ROM and OS, and this space is getting a little tight. So I'd like to try uh, banking that ROM uh, in order to add add more code to the ROM and then also bank the RAM. I've got uh, you know 128K, I'm only using 48. So I would like to make the rest of that RAM accessible. Okay, folks, that's it for now. I'll show you my exploration and what I'm thinking in the next video. Bye.